Did you know that you can make diamonds from live resin by putting it into a centrifuge? All you have to do is place it into a tube in a centrifuge that has a built-in filter and turn it on. Let it spin for an hour or two and all your terps will get sucked to the bottom of the tube through the filter and all of your THCA diamonds will remain on top. They'll give you a nice diamonds and a nice sauce that you can then go ahead and mix together. What I would recommend is then taking those THCA diamonds after, decarbing them, putting the terp sauce back in and you got yourself a really quality live resin vape. All right, let's get started. So the first step is you gotta get the live resin and put it into two vials. Now with the centrifuge, it is very important that it is balanced fully. So that means that you have to have two vials or four vials or six vials, but it has to be equally balanced on the left and right side of the centrifuge. That means if you're gonna put three grams in one, there has to be exactly three grams in the other. And it has to be the same substance as well. For example, if I put three grams of live resin in here and three grams of water in here, the water will be pulled through while the live resin won't at the same time and it'll create an imbalance of the weight distribution. Even though it's the same way in each tube, it'll still create an issue. And when this pupper is spinning at 4,000 RPM, any imbalance will create an issue. So you gotta make sure that you're perfectly balanced with weight and substance. Another trick is that these often have inner metal linings that your tube goes into. These metal linings can get hot as it spins at that RPM. So what you can do is take these and put them in the freezer beforehand and pre-chill them. I have six of them, so I have them in the freezer chilling and I'll cycle them out every half hour, hour or so when they start to get warm. And that way you can keep your live resin cool as you're filtering it. The advantage of that is to prevent any possible degradation of terpenes from the heat. All right, so let's get started. The first step is I gotta scoop out my live resin here and put it into these containers. and put five grams in each. So I have approximately 11 grams of live resin. I am leaving the tops on both of these so that when I fill them up, I can make them the same way, including the lids, as there is some variance in the plastic. So I'm gonna try and bring them both up to the same total weight, including the lids. So I'll try and put 22.3 grams in each test tube. balance them right there. All right, after you've balanced your vials with your live resin, go ahead and take your chilled centrifuge tubes. You're just gonna give them a quick wipe down as there's some moisture from the freezer on them. I'll take out the old warm ones from the centrifuge. Make sure they are in a line. And then just pop in your vials, close the lid, and hit start. It's that easy to turn it on, to load it up. It's a pretty nice way to separate your terps and your THCA. Uh, that sounds just the timer. Sorry about that. But yeah, after about 20 minutes, let's see how it looks. So we got some terps pulled through. It's at the top there, and it's getting warm already. So the tube's sitting at about 85 degrees. That's warmed up a bit. 
It's not that hot though, so I'll let that keep going for a bit before I switch it out. And uh, I'll switch it out now. quite white. You can see the diamonds warming. Just a little bit of turp sauce live rising left. Just a nice white diamond. Beautiful. Putting in the chilled tubes. So these are getting warm. It's been spinning for about an hour and a half. Let's get it started back up. Another hour. Good amount of chirps. A little bit of sauce left. Once the machine's wound down and finished, you can go ahead and take out your samples. And as you see here, I have a pure white THCA on top and some beautiful terps on the bottom. And I have two samples of these. So here I have Delta 9 THCA. I'm going to decarb it into just normal D9 or what would normally be known as distillate. However, this wasn't distilled. It is made just through mechanical separation of live resin. Uh, but regardless, it's D9, and D9 is D9, regardless of the source, if it's pure enough, which this is. So I'll take this D9, THCA, decarb it into just THC, and I'll also save some of that THCA to mix back in, so I can have a more full spectrum cart. And of course, it's all going to be flavored by these beautiful terpenes right here. So the first step here is just to separate it out. All right, and then emptying the tubes is quite simple. So here I just have a sheet of parchment. Take the tube. Now there's a small lip here that you can lift and separate out the inside vessel. And this has all of the THCA, and this has all of the terpenes. I'll just seal off the terpenes for now. And to get the THCA out, we're going to want to put a small crease in our parchment paper. This will make pouring a lot easier. And then we can just dump it onto the parchment paper. There's some stubborn left on there. Just give it some scratching. Careful not to damage the filter itself. I'm gonna reuse these filters, so I'm not gonna perfectly empty it. I'm satisfied with that. Before oxygen degrades it, you're gonna want and pour it into a container. So we have the fold on the parchment to make this pouring process a lot easier. There's a jar full of THCA. And now we want to put the terps into a jar. Live 
resin into THCA and high terpene extract sauce. So this is basically just almost pure terpenes mixed with other flavonoids um, and potentially some minor cannabinoids. It's a really, really good terp sauce. You're not gonna get a better good terpene solution than just taking live resin and spinning it out like this. This is the best terp juice right here. I've also got a magnetic stir bar. So first what I'm gonna do is take some of the THCA and decarb it. To do that, uh, you wanna decarb it 250 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna want a proper stir bar. This is a glass magnetic stir bar, so it won't degrade at 250 degrees Fahrenheit like potentially a Teflon or silicone coated one might. I'm making just one cart here just to make it simple. I'm gonna go for a ratio of about, I don't know, I will make it up as we go. Let's try that way. I'm taking the THCA and I'm gonna decarb a portion of it into THC. The difference there is THCA is non-psychoactive. Uh, Delta 9 THCA won't get you high. You do need to decarb it first. Um, when you're smoking in your vape, the THCA will be converted into THC by the process of the vaporization of the vape. So you'll get high from THCA no matter what if you vape it. Um, but the major thing here is THCA is a solid, a crystalline solid, and THC is a liquid. So if we take our crystalline solid THCA and we convert it into a liquid by decarbing it, it will flow better in our carts. Also, THCA, if there's too much of it, it can recrystallize in your vape cart, creating solids in there that will block up your coil. You don't want that. So having a small bit of THCA is okay, especially since the THC will stop the crystallization. It helps to, helps bind it all together and separate it and stop it from recrystallizing. So using a higher portion of THC compared to THCA it can be important in vapes. So I'm going to use a higher portion, maybe 60% THC compared to THCA, but it's all made from the same source here. So I'm gonna turn on my scale and I'm gonna weigh probably approximately 0.8. I'm gonna try and make, even though I'm doing a one gram cartridge, I'm gonna make more than one gram of oil just to make sure I can fill it up fully. And then I can have some extra for dabs. So I'm gonna go and try and put a 0.8 of the THCA in here to decarb. Okay, so I got 0.82 grams of THCA in there. We'll start the decarb process. You're also gonna to want to use some argon gas. So what the argon gas will do is displace the oxygen in the vial. So the argon is heavier than air, so it creates almost like a blanket at the bottom, and that blanket will stop the oxygen from reacting with your THCA or your THC, um, which is what causes it to turn yellow or darker. It's the oxygenization. So by using the argon gas, we create like a safety blanket to protect the cannabinoids from the oxygen. Especially during the decarb process where we have the high heat, it is most susceptible to darkening and to damage from oxygen. So this will really help. You can purchase these uh, small argon uh, gas canisters on Amazon. There's a link below. These are used primarily for wine, and uh, so that's why they're small. But I really do recommend you purchase a larger argon uh, canister uh, yourself. It's a lot cheaper in the long run, a lot cheaper per weight of argon. This is the most expensive way you can get it. Sure, it's the cheapest initial purchase, but it's the most expensive per gram of argon in the long run for sure. So get your hot plate. This one's already preheated to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to make our oil reach 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means you need your hot plate to be hotter than your oil or the thing that you're heating. If you set your hot plate to 250, you'll never get your oil to 250. You have heat loss through air, through surface uh, area, everything. You're not going to get it. You have to have a higher temperature than your desired temperature. I've explained this so many times, people don't understand it. To reach 250, you have to be above 250. How do you know that you don't go over 250? You watch what you're heating. Keep checking the heat of this. There's, there's no way other to avoid that. Once this does reach 250, then you can go ahead and hit set your hot plate to 250 and you might stay around 250. You're gonna lose a little bit, but that works. But you're never going to get your, to your desired temperature if you're set at 250 on your hot plate. It's not an oven. It's not to totally encapsulating it. Now, if you're in an oven and you set it to 250, then that'll be fine. It'll eventually get everything in there to 250. 
But so I have it set to a higher temperature, 300, and I'll start decarbing now. So the decarving is going to take about 45 minutes to an hour. I uh, don't do it too based on time. There's a large variance based on how long it takes your oil to heat up, how much oil you have. Um, basically what you're going to do is look, watch for the small bubbles to stop forming. When it's perfectly still, it's done decarving. If you still see some small bubbles coming, um, those small bubbles are the CO2, uh, the carboxyl group breaking off of the THC. When THCA decarbs into THC, there's a loss of 13%. So you, from every gram of THCA will become 0.87 grams of THC. That 13% loss is the THCA breaking off the acid group and becoming THC. Um, so it's actually a carboxyl. Uh, we call it THC acid, but it's a carboxyl group. So CO2 um, is being removed from it and you can see that CO2 escaping in the form of bubbles. Uh, so when the small bubbles stop forming, you're done decarbing. After it's done decarbing, we go ahead and put it back on the scale, turn the heat way low on the hot plate, and I'm going to add in some THCA to do about half as much THCA as I did THC. So was, there's uh, 0 0.8 grams of THC in there, and I'm going to do 0.4 grams of THCA. All right, so there we go. The THCA is in the added to the THC, and I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, some of the live resin terpenes as well. It smells so good. Now this isn't just straight terpenes. Normally, I recommend between three and 10% maximum terpenes. This is a high terpene extract sauce, basically. You go anywhere between, I'd say, maybe 10 to 30% ratio of this, which would be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a 0 0.3, which is about maybe 10 to 15%. Like I said, the math doesn't really matter. I'm not even sure what percentage 0 0.3 is of, well, I guess if I add 0.8 plus 0.4 is 1.2, 0 0.3 brings it to 1.5. Yeah, I'm not getting math, I don't know what percentage that is, but it's less than 20. So now I'm gonna make sure that the hot plate is cooled down. I don't want it to put this back on at 250. I want it to be around 150 on the hot plate, just enough to keep it warm to mix and keep it warm for putting in the syringe. So I'm gonna take the heat gun, check the hot plate, and we're at about 230, so I need to cool it down. To cool it down, just throw some water on there. I'm using ethanol. I wouldn't recommend throwing ethanol on a hot plate, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. And then just wipe it off. So if you normally just use water for this, it, it really works to help cool it down. Uh, I'm just using ethanol right now because this thing is filthy and it's a good chance to give it a little bit of a cleaning. And I'm not concerned about fumes because I have good ventilation in the room, but you really shouldn't or ethanol directly on a hot plate yourself. All right, that lowered it to about 180. That's good enough for now. Heat's basically off completely, so it'll keep dropping. So I'll put the mixture on, and then just stir it up enough to make it uh, mix together, homogenous, and I'll throw in a bake. 
So putting the ingredients back together is pretty much the easy part. The hard part is separating them in the centrifuge, but even that's pretty easy. I like to hit it with a heat gun just to get anything off the sides down to the bottom. 